This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make your very own chair pads out of one inch high density polyurethane foam. These pads will include a piping that goes all around the perimeter. At the two back corners will be fabric ties and we've also sewn the back edge shut with a sewing machine. We're going to show you every step required to make your own chair pads. Let's get started. Our chair has some shape, so we're going to pattern that shape into the pad. This chair has some contour to it and we're going to try to match that contour. So I'm going to use Duraskrim pattern material lay it on top of the chair this edge is straight and lay it up against the back of the chair like this. Then we're going to trace around following the contour of the chair with our marker. Now we're going to cut it out. We are going to add some seam allowance to this, but I am cutting directly on top of the line that we struck on the chair. For our chair pad, we're going to be using this beautiful pink Covington fabric, but you'll find thousands of uh, decor and upholstery fabrics at the Sarat website. We're going to trace around on the back side and we want to add three quarter inch around the entire perimeter of this pattern. We are marking three quarter of an inch around the perimeter, then I'll just trace around it. Place marks approximately every two to four inches apart. We're designing this chair pad cushion to be used with a one inch high density polyurethane foam available from Sailrite. The bottom edge is a straight line, so I have two marks there, so I'll just strike a line there. And then up the sides, I'm going to just uh, come up to my hashes that I've made that I measured three quarter and trace around it. There is no boxing or facing around the perimeter of this cushion, so we just have two plates. So the three quarter inch will allow for seam allowance and also the thickness of the one inch foam. We're just using a rotary cutter to cut this out, but you can also use scissors. To prevent damage to the rotary cutter, we're using a cutting mat on the underside. To do our second plate, we're going to flip it so that we uh, get a mirrored image of it and just use the one that we just cut out for the second pattern. Then we can just use the rotary cutter right around this one. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to click the thumbs up. That helps our channel. Next, we're going to cut the piping and the fabric ties to size. This bottom edge has already been straightened. We're going to use our clear acrylic ruler and measure over one and a half inches to create our piping. This is a straight cut piping, which actually works pretty well uh, for most applications. If you want to do bias cut piping, you can do that as well. We have a video showing that. This one and a half inch strip needs to be long enough to go around the entire perimeter of our chair pad with some extra. Now we'll cut strips two inches wide for the ties at the two back corners of the chair. And we want these uh, two of them per pad, each at about 20 inches in length. We have our two plates, we have our strip for our piping, and we have the two strips for our ties. And then we also have our piping. Now we'll show you how to make piping. Okay, we're going to put our piping inside of our one and a half inch strip of fabric and fold it inside. And then we have a cording foot that's already built into this Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine. The sewing machine is set up in the Ultrafeed collapsible sewing table. So I'm going to fold the piping. I like to put my this finger right beside the piping and this finger kind of keeping the cording down as I sew. We're using a thread that matches our fabric fairly well, and we're using a size number 14 needle. Want more free tutorial videos like this? Be sure to click the thumbs up. That'll help our YouTube channel in massive ways. We're going to pick one of these plates and we're going to sew piping onto it. I'm going to fold one of them in half to find the middle of the back side and then I'm going to cut a small triangle out of it, not going deeper than my seam allowance, so I know where the piping needs to be joined up at the back side. Okay, so this is the back of our cushion. We're going to extend our piping about an inch or so past the middle position and we will not sew there. We'll start sewing approximately here. 
about two inches away from the middle position. The cording foot is, uh, or the standard foot has a cording tunnel built into it, so we just sew around the perimeter. And we want to match up this edge with that edge as we sew. Watch what I do when I get here to the corner. Before I get to that corner, I'm going to bury my needle and I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut a notch into the flange here. So this allows it to go around that corner. So it takes a bend nicely because I'm, I'm almost going to do a 90 degree turn here. So I'm going to sew up to that corner slowly. I'm going to kind of bury my needle, lift my foot, and then kind of roll the fabric around and position the piping where I want it, lower my foot, and sometimes I actually roll the balance wheel by hand just to get around that corner and then I lift my foot and make adjustments, especially at a 90 degree like this. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I sew down this side, matching up the edges. There's shape on this cushion. Some cushions don't have it, but this one has a little bit of shape, so I'm trying to follow that shape. Now watch what we do when we get to the rounded corner. It's a little bit different. This is, this is okay. I don't need to cut any relief notches out of that. But here, this is a very rounded corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cut a few relief notches in a few different spots to allow that piping to take the turn. This is a straight cut piping. Um, if it were a bias, it would probably take the current turn a little bit better, but this is one way you can make straight cut bi uh, piping and still have it take turns nicely just by cutting notches. Now when we come to the end, you'll notice that our piping is rather short. We really should have sewn another strip of fabric to this strip to extend the length of it, but it'll still work fine. Yep. So here we're coming up to the beginning point, and what I'll do is I'll stop sewing right about here. Okay, so with my machine needle buried, I'm going to open up this side. So I'm going to trim this piping so it's flush with that other one. Okay, we don't want a raw edge here, and I didn't leave myself much piping, so I don't have much to play with, unfortunately. Uh, but we just fold that in, then we tuck this in and fold that over the top, and you've got a nice transition, which I'll show you here when we're done. My hands are in the way because I'm trying to hold everything in place. There we go. And now you've got a nice looking transition. Now we'll make ties out of our two inch by about 20 inch lengths of fabric. These are the two fabric ties. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to apply basting tape to the two long edges of both of these strips. This is a quarter inch basting tape for canvas. It's a great aid in sewing in that it keeps everything in place uh, while you take it to the sewing machine and sew. I highly recommend it. Okay, we're going to peel off the transfer paper revealing the double-sided tape. On the ends, we're going to fold it over approximately three-quarter to an inch on both of the edges. Then what we'll do is we'll fold this up, not to the halfway point, but almost to the halfway point. And I'm not measuring anything here. I'm just kind of guessing at it. Don't have to be precise here, but you want the fold to be consistent along the length. See how that double-sided tape holds everything down well? Then I'm going to do the same thing to this side, folding almost to the middle position. Make sure this is tucked in. It, wa it wants to untuck on you. You can use basting tape there too if you'd like. I don't think it's necessary. Then I'm going to put a run of basting tape down one side. Now I'm going to fold it right in half. Here I want to be precise. I want that edge, the edges to be lined up nicely with each other. 
So there we go, there's our fabric tie. Do the same thing to this one. Okay, this is really bulky at the end, but uh, we have the Sayrite Ultra Feed uh, sewing machine with the walking foot, so I can get it under there nicely. Yeah, with the home sewing machine, you may struggle a little bit with the end. Now I'm gonna do is just a little bit of reversing at the end, and then sew all the way to the other end and reverse that it. Then we won't take it out, we'll just put in our second one and do the same. Do some reversing there. Next up, we'll sew the two plates together. Okay, the next step is to actually sew this to this by putting outside surfaces together like this, and then taking the sewing machine and sewing, leaving the back end open so you can insert your foam. But it can be difficult to sometimes keep things lined up. So again, we're gonna use our secret weapon, the handyman's secret weapon, quarter inch basting tape for canvas. Now I'm not gonna apply any back here right now. I'm gonna apply it right to, from the corner because that's the end we're gonna keep open. And we're gonna keep this double-sided tape away from our piping uh, because we don't want it to show up in our end results. Now before we uh, base these together, I'm gonna take the opposite plate without the piping turn it upside down, this is the back edge, and I'm gonna apply the uh, basting tape to the back edge, and this will be used in a future step. Now, I'm not gonna put it all the way to the edge, I'm gonna leave it off by about an inch and a half to two inches, but I'm gonna put it very close to the raw edge, and again, I'm gonna break it off at about two inches from this edge. We will not peel off the transfer paper on this until a later step. Now, we'll come back to this one, and we'll take the transfer paper off, revealing the double-sided tape, and we will carefully base that other plate to this with outside surfaces facing each other and trying to keep all the edges lined up as much as possible, especially at the front. At the back, I don't care if it's a little bit long because when you sew something, it shrinks up a little bit. It's not uncommon for it to be a little bit oversized, this top plate. If I line it up like this, I can see that this plate's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna match it up to the front edge, but I'm gonna try to center it from left to right. This is one of the reasons I love using double-sided tape. We can do this in advance before we get it to the sewing machine and find out, oh, we're off. Okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's flip it over and see how much we have overhanging a little bit. So we have some overhanging here but uh, we have some overhanging here as well. So I think that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad at all. I'm not gonna trim that, I don't need to. And then on the back side, let's take a look at that. Yeah, looks pretty flat, even with that. So I'm happy with where it's basted, so I'm gonna make sure it's basted well, and then we'll take it to the sewing machine. Now I like to sew with my stitches on top so I can see where my stitches are that previously sewed the piping on. And what we'll do is we'll take one of these fabric ties and we will fold it directly in half. And then we will insert it into the corner, keeping it about an inch away from the corner. It's usually not right on the corner. So I'm gonna insert it inside the cushion. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep it about an inch or so from the corner, right about there. It's okay if it hangs out a little bit. Okay, so there's my one tie. And I'm gonna start sewing about two inches, leaving this open so I can insert my foam. And because we have those stitches on there, I can see pretty much where our piping landed before and I can keep them right, right at the same spot. I'm gonna do some reversing here because we wanna make sure that that doesn't open up when we insert our foam. Big bump. You may have to walk your sewing machine over this. We shouldn't have to do that with an ultra feed. Should be able to walk right over that. See that huge bump? Watch this. Incredible machine. No reason to do any reversing because we're just keeping the stitch all together here. Now when I get to that corner, I'm gonna bury my needle and then I'm gonna lift my foot and I'm gonna pivot around that corner.
So we're rounding this corner. We have to put our fabric tie in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round it. And then right about there. I don't want to get too close because it's going to be hard to get this in. I really should bury my needle. There we go. Now I can lift my foot, fold this in half, and insert it inside. Just like the other one. We want to get it as close to that presser foot as possible. If you did sewed too far, then you have to lift your presser foot and, and take it out and put it in and then put it back in. But I think we're going to be good like this. So I shoved it in there. And now, don't forget to lower your foot. It looks like it's lowered. It's not. It'll cause all kinds of sewing problems if you try to sew with your foot up. Now we're going to go over this. And then once I'm past it, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing. Now we have an opening for the foam. We're ready to insert it. Now we're going to insert our 1-inch high-density polyurethane foam into the cover. This hair rack carries a variety of foams. For a chair pad like this, I like to use a high-density foam. The higher the density, the longer the life. It won't bottom out as quickly as a medium or low-density foam. We have a variety of firmnesses. This is an extra firm one inch, and that's what we're going to be using. And this is a very soft, high-density foam. Uh, I don't like the soft foam as much as I like the firm foam for something as thin as one inch. This is our pattern, and we're going to tr trace the exact same size as the pattern and cut out the foam the same size as well. You can find the high-density polyurethane foam at Sailrite. Okay, we have a foam saw that can uh, be used to cut thick foams, but with a one-inch high-density foam, medium density or low density as well, it can be cut with scissors. When using a thin foam like this one-inch foam, I typically like to choose either the firm feel or the extra firm. We're going to turn our assembly right side out and push all the edges out. It is important that you put your hand inside the cushion and push all of the corners out. So using silk film can help you push a foam into a cover and make it a lot easier. So this is a center folded piece of silk film, so I've cut it oversized, and we would just want to uh, unfold it. This is the back edge of our foam, so I'm going to leave this edge so that I can insert a vacuum to suck the foam down a little bit. So I'm going to fold this over the top and then I'm going to cut off the excess, leaving about uh, 12 inches or 8 inches extra at the back edge. So now I'm going to open up the silk film and insert a vacuum onto the foam and then cover up the area around the vacuum hose and then turn the vacuum on and watch what happens. When using silk film in a vacuum cleaner to suck the foam down in size for easy insertion, it's always best to get a second helper because one person has to hold the vacuum on the foam and keep the vacuum on while the other person pushes the foam into the cover. This is always easier. Now, have I done it my, by myself? Oh yeah, a lot. And it's not as much fun. Shove it, it in there. Shove it in there. Very good. There we go. Put it down in there. Okay, so watch what happens when I turn off the vacuum. Look at that. It's expanding, filling that beautifully, and that was so easy. I don't have to fight it. Wow. Now all we have to do is close up the back end. Often people hand sew the back end. We're going to do it with a sewing machine. We'll show you how. Okay, we're going to take our silk film. We want to get it out of the way. And we also want to leave an opening so that the air can escape in the back. So I'm going to basically unwrap the back of the foam. And also this keeps it out of the way so that we can sew this uh, opening closed. Then remember that double-sided tape that we put on that uh, fabric here? We're going to peel off the transfer paper and we're going to use that to create a half inch hem. Let me get to it. Sometimes if you can't get to the ends, you can just use your scissors and you can cut it in the middle. Then you can peel off uh, at the middle position and that'll take it off all the way to the ends. Don't worry if the double sided or if this, there's some of the transfer paper still in the cushion, it won't hurt anything. In other words, if you sewed some of it in. There, we got that one off completely. 
So now what I want to do is I want to fold this back a half inch. And I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to basically guess. And that double sided tape keeps it all in place. And then the idea is that when we take it to the sewing machine, we match it up to that piping like this and we sew it shut. So make sure it's going to look good before you take it to the sewing machine and sew. Yeah, I think that's going to look great. Okay, it is best to, to finish this last stitch at the back edge with the roping zipper foot left. So I'm going to take off the standard foot and install the roping zipper foot left onto the Alter Feed sewing machine. Okay, so now we have the foam that's kind of pushing against uh, our, our top fabric, but we can kind of push the foam back a little bit and we can close it up. And you can pin this if you like. I don't find that it's necessary since we use the double-sided tape. Everything pretty much stays in place. So now I'm going to walk this to the sewing machine. We stop sewing there because that's, that's, so that's where we need to begin sewing. Okay, so there's where we stop sewing. So I want to stay as close to this fold as possible so that the stitch doesn't show up much. And I'm using a thread that looks great with this fabric, available from Sayerite as well. And we want to make sure that everything is going to look good as we go. You can concentrate just on that uh, three or four inches of sewing. And you want to do some reversing here at the beginning. Again, we're using a walking foot. You know, this, this could be hard for a standard foot sewing machine because you've got all this foam in here, but not for the Alter Feed. So I'm just lining up this fabric with that piping. Make sure that you're not going to have excess fabric at the end, and we're not. I can feel it's going to lay nice and flat. And there's where we stop sewing, so I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. We are done. Look how nice that looks. Wow, looks great. Okay, so now we have our chair pad complete. Just tie it to the back of the chair. Our chair pad matches the contour of the chair. It's perfect. Don't go away, the materials list and the tools list is coming up next. It is only through your loyal support that these free videos are made available. Thanks for your loyal support. And be sure to subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. Click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Thanks. As promised, here's the materials and tools list. As mentioned earlier, Sayerite has thousands of decor and upholstery fabrics that are great for chair pads like this. Check it out at the Sayerite website. If you have any questions about the foams or any of our tools or other materials, please give us a call at Sayerite. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.